All right, Brand DIYers, welcome again. Uh, today we got a very exciting event. It's the very first time that we've done this, and uh, as with every first time, we already had a technical glitch. So what you're re watching right now is a recording of our very first Brand DIY coaching session with one of our Brand DIYers, Ursula, who I'm gonna introduce here in a second. And what Brand DIY coaching is all about, we take one of your businesses, and you give us sort of the, the lowdown on what the business is about, how come you started it, what's going right, what's going wrong. And then we try to unpack one or two issues that you're having and we try to fix them within half an hour. So that's what this is all about. And Ursula, who I've known for quite a while, and I know her partner, Joe, really, really well, who's also going to be coming on the show. Uh, Joe is a sales expert. and We've got him next Tuesday. And Ursula has a very cool business that she's going to describe to you now. And she's got a very cool problem challenge that I think a lot of us are having. So this is going to be very, very informative and enlightening for everyone. I think if we can solve the problem, uh, everybody will benefit from it. So welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mark. Yeah, All right. First issue. Wait, wait, wait. First issue, the nose. We got to get past that because otherwise everybody's going to go, what's with the nose? I know. I wish I had a really good story for it, but I it don't. It looks kung fu. It uh, looks very kung fu. Yeah. It looks badass, doesn't it? I know. <laughs> um, no, you know what? It's um, skin cancer. So I just got it removed on last Thursday. And so now it just looks like crap. And um, so yeah, let's let that out of the way. <laughs> I think you should stick with it because you know, if somebody comes to your dance studio, oh, I gave the, I let the cat out of the bag, but if somebody comes to your dance studio and they see that. Yeah, I know. Watch out, right? Yeah, they're not going to give tough. you any. They're not going to give you any negative feedback. I'd say. No. I'm yeah. tough. You make, don't want to mess with me. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> make it make it like a Shaolin temple of dance. <laughs> Great. Awesome. All right. So, give us a bit of a background around yourself. Uh, sure. Yeah. Um, so I'm a dancer. Uh, I had been a professional dancer for, you know, whatever it's been, my gosh, how old am I now? Uh, most of my life. Um, and, uh, I went into teaching after finishing my professional career. Um, I was teaching at a, a very, uh, well-known and reputable ballet school here in Victoria. Um, and, uh, anyways, COVID happened as you explained in your Facebook page, um, explanation, and uh, I was kind of stuck on my own. So one of the things I sat down and I, I realized pretty quickly once this started was that virtual is not going away um, and how we can capitalize. And I hate using the word pivot because everybody overuses it so much these days, but how we could pivot and actually um, somehow jump on this new opportunity. And so Joe and I sat down and of course I was really lucky that I've got um, a sales expert who happens to live with me. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, we sat down and we tried to realize what we could do with this new world that we've been given, right? Mm -hmm. um, and our intention was never to replace in person because nobody wants to do virtual ballet performances, right? Like that's not going to be a thing. Um, mm -hmm. Nobody's going to do exclusively virtual ballet classes. It's not going to be a thing either, but virtual is not going away despite people having Zoom fatigue and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, it's going to be here to stay. And I think it is really amazingly beneficial in many ways in the sense that, you know, it's so convenient and it's so accessible. And so I think that's the thing that's going to stick is how accessible and convenient it is. And so that's, that's what we built the whole platform around was being accessible, having um, the opportunity to access really good training um, in your own home. Right. Now, so. <laughs> how's the response been? Because I know I do music lessons and uh, before COVID happened, it was live every Tuesday night for half an hour. And then COVID happened and we couldn't get together. Yeah. And I just said, I don't know how this is going to work. He says, why don't we do Skype call? I go, that's weird. And, and he said, why don't I record videos for you? And yeah. so what he did was every Tuesday, I'd send a song and he'd record a video of instruction. And I found it actually better than right. live. It, right. The camera, the camera work. Cause every time I bring my camera into the music lesson and film it, so I can remember it. Yeah. But he did that. He has way better cameras and yep. I, I didn't really want to go back to the live lesson. It was really weird. So That's what, interesting. what's the feedback from, from your students? Uh, so the feedback has <coughs> been, has, inter has been interesting, bless you, from both sides. So there's this type of person who um, needs somebody to be there live with them to make sure they're actually doing it mm -hmm. so that they're getting that, you know, they're feeling, there is an element of feeling like you're being watched. So there's mm -hmm. an element of accountability in the live lessons. 
Um, but so the other thing that Joe and I are, are actually working on that's going to start in September is doing a mix of live and pre-recorded because there are benefits of pre-recorded, which is something that we want to capitalize on as well, which is the element of, you know, you can stop pause, rewind, you know, listen to the material again, because sometimes that stuff just goes, you know, it goes, it goes, goes. And then you're like, oh God, I wish I could just rewind that for a second. Mm -hmm. um, so there are benefits to both. Um, and the feedback is that I think one of the nice things about virtual is that you, you have the opportunity to do both. You've got, mm -hmm. you can do the accountability, but you can also do the stop and rewind type of thing. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah. Um, so, so when you started up, uh, we talked a little bit in advance. It, it, this isn't totally off the cuff. We talked a little bit in advance about what was a, a sort of a brand DIY issue or challenge that you were having. And you talked, you went right away to story. So, yeah. so unpack that for us. Yeah. Um, I think being, um, for me, being a non, I don't know. I, I, I'm a dancer. I've always considered myself an artist. Um, you know, I, I think I'm, I'm fairly smart. I believe I'm fairly smart, but I don't think that I have like any experience in the business world or understanding marketing or branding. And so I think it's been interesting being part of your group because I've been seeing a lot of stuff that seems very daunting to mm -hmm. me as an outsider. Cause I feel like an outsider, right? I don't mm -hmm. feel like somebody that's had a lot of experience in that field. Um, and so I think fundamentally I understand what my brand is, but I don't always understand how to, um, package it in a way mm -hmm. that makes sense to my audience or my customers. And I have a trouble, I have trouble with storytelling. Like I think as humans, we tell stories all the time, but as soon as you say that it's for a business, it's like you shut down, right? Mm -hmm. Like I tell stories to my friends. I tell stories to Joe. I've managed to communicate information, but mm -hmm. somehow when when you try to put it in this in this in this little bag it suddenly becomes very scary mm -hmm. um so uh yeah i struggle so with that. what i mean fundamentally i think storytelling is weird anyway because we've gotten this sort of idea of what storytelling is and it's it's the old man dressed up as the wizard at the at the farmer's market you know doing <laughs> card tricks and telling stories yeah and it's just all angels and crystals and stuff i think right. it's gotten a real bad rap Right. Um, but uh, storytelling fundamentally is a real simple thing. It's yeah. how we make sense of the world. Yeah. And um, it's easy for us to teach a lesson to little kids about, you know, why you shouldn't trust strangers if you tell a story about it or, yeah. you know, but it's, it's, it's weird if you're selling uh, a product to tell a story about it because you're going, well, in my business plan, I said, I am running an online ballet training school. Mm -hmm. And here's first year projections, second year projections. Here's my yeah. share of addressable market. Here's the total yeah. addressable. And nowhere in there does it. And then I'm going to tell you a story. Right, right. And so you go, there's a whole bunch of bullshit. Um, and a lot of bad storytelling out there too. There's a lot of people who go, well, if we do an about us page and we talk about this fascinating journey the founders had and why you should buy their product, there's your story. And I go, well, that, I mean, it's very easy to take the hero's journey and follow that and end up with buy my stuff. Um, and, and it, that just comes across cynical and really lame. And it's, yeah. I mean, stories are right. good to hear, but those stories are crap. Now, did yeah. you have, did you have trouble sort of like getting sort of figuring out getting past the crap? Well, I think I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if, you know, I, I think in my, maybe I'm a little bit less jaded than you are because I feel like stories are important. I don't think that I need to make up a story. I think mm -hmm. I just need to tell people why I started this in a way. Yeah, I'm super right? jaded. So maybe I'm, I, yeah. So clearly <laughs> I'm, I'm naive and a little bit, <laughs> I'm a little bit uh, green or, or green around the gills, but, um, or whatever that is, that saying. That, that, that's like hung over, green around the gills. Green, huh? not, so yeah. green, green around the edges. Or that's whatever. another story. Greenhorn, yeah. Um, <laughs> Greenhorn, what's that? Yeah. Greenhorn. Greenhorn. But um, I think that, you know, for instance, when I start, what like, Joe and I sat down and he's really good at sort of filtering through all the information because I talk a lot, right? And he's learned how to filter through all of it and like find the parts that matter. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the parts that matter is that I was jaded about the dance world. I was jaded about the way that I was treated in the dance world. And one of the things, and this is maybe where my problem is, is I'm trying to articulate what it is that I want to create. And I want to create a place where people can always feel 
safe to dance and not um, one of the things I found with the dance world was how terrifying it is. Mean and girls. Mean girls. Yeah. And it's very insular. There are pockets of people that hate each other and have opinions about everything. And for me, I just, I think it's important just to keep, to not have any of that bullshit here. Excuse mm -hmm. me right? Like to keep it pure. I don't want to, I, I don't want to talk about, um, you know, what these people are doing or what these people are doing and how wrong they are. I just want people to come to me and dance with me. Right. And I'll teach them everything that I know. Cause I'm a dance nerd. Right. So I'll mm -hmm. just talk about technique all day long. I'll talk about artistry all day long, but, um, I don't want to belittle it. Like dance has this thing where it's like, people are constantly belittled. Right. We haven't yet, we haven't yet advanced, you know, it's like all these, all these workplace standards that are in place for everybody else. Dance world's kind of completely skipped that over. You can pay dancers minimum wage and still treat them like crap right? It's totally okay. And nobody's going to say anything because they're just going to say, I'm happy to dance. Like, I'm just glad to dance for you. They just feel lucky to have a job. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I don't want to be a part of that world anymore. And that's part of the reason I wanted to go out on my own. I don't want to be uh, uh, propagating something that I left. You There's know? the start of your story. So The start of the story is always um, a place where you were living in a status quo world pre what you did. And you're, you're, bumbling along, you're doing okay. Something's pissing you off. Well, you just gave us lots of stuff that's pissing you off. <laughs> and then something happens because most people live their lives in a perpetual state of pissed offness, and then they retire and die. Right. But for the lucky few, they live in a state of being pissed off and then something happens mm -hmm. and COVID happened. And that snapped you into this situation where you go, I can't go back to that shitty world now what? Mm -hmm. And then, so then, then the next thing, the now what began. Yeah. And the next, the, the, what's cool about this is just a little while ago, you told me about uh, the now what, the virtual versus the pre-recorded, yeah. that you guys explored all this stuff and that you saw that, um, that it's, it's, you know, doing virtual, some people need the discipline, other people like to for, fast forward, rewind, mm -hmm. that there's new models coming out of this. That's the second part of the story. Mm -hmm. The first gotcha. part, I'm really pissed off. Boom, there's a trigger, COVID. Now what? So we started bumbling along in the dark, trying to figure out something that, let's face it, nobody's getting right yet. Mm -hmm. right. And so you started, you started doing it. Right. And what you discovered was you could do virtual, but it's kind of lame. You could do pre-recorded, it's kind of lame. If you blend the two together, it's a little less lame. If you augment it with other stuff, the lameness factor drops and the good factor starts to go up. And how come? Because you're like Frodo on his way to Mordor or Harry Potter learning to become a wizard. You have one bad experience after another. That's the second part of the story, the, the journey. Like you said, and what's journey. cool about that part of the story is that I get it. I, you and I talked about a bloopers reel, all the things that go wrong on a, in a week, you know, yeah. where the, somebody drops the connection or the camera falls over. It happens to all of us. And you recording stuff and bad things happening makes us go, ah, she's just like us. She's not a mean girl, you know? Yeah. So your story, the whole idea, I hated mean girls. Then COVID happened. And here I am bumbling along and trying to get it right, you know, live, pre-recorded, maybe events, maybe instruction books. I don't know, but I'm, I'm finding my way just like the rest of you are, right. what I've got. And then what you discover is like Luke Skywalker, you discover that you have a force, you have a thing that starts to come up and you go, wait a minute, this is actually quite cool. I can change people's lives, make them feel better about themselves give them a safe space mm. in a way that I never could when I was getting a nickel, on, nickel an hour working, at, working for a studio. Right. So what yeah. you're going to see is that you're starting to see that this is, that it, isn't, it isn't a replacement for the studio. It isn't what you thought video would be, but some, a third thing is starting yeah, to happen exactly. here. You're going, who knew? Yeah, yeah. discovering, yeah. Yeah, and that's that's where that's where uh, you get this sort of power. Where you go, I found something new, right? And yeah. that's your secret power, and that's that bec that becomes this thing. That that's what that's what you're about. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. That's your, um, that's the draw, you know? So if you're going to say online ballet training, maybe that's it. Maybe it's the safe space with dance. I don't know what it is, but what it tells me is that there's a, a value proposition that you probably didn't see here before Mm -hmm. COVID. Absolutely. Yeah. That does make it clearer. Yeah. Yeah. Now that's only one part of it. Yeah. There's so much. The best part of the story. We talked about this, I think yesterday testimonials. Yeah. Um, Nobody really gives a crap about you except to the degree that you're like them. So if I find out that you're super unattainable and you're totally not the same sort, you're a billionaire, uh, super rock star, I I don't have anything to do with you. Right. But if I find out that you knock over cameras and you're trying to figure out how to make it work, Suddenly I go, oh my God, she's just like me. And you tell me this story about working for a nickel and how shitty that was and how you didn't know what to do with COVID. I go, oh my God, that's totally what I feel like. Now, that's good. But what's better is if you can have customers Mm -hmm. who have come to you and everybody can get testimonials. Everybody gets written testimonials. But what I would highly recommend and I think is going to probably be your strongest story Mm -hmm is the story that's not told by you. It's a story told by a little eight-year-old girl or a 45-year-old person who is looking for fitness and doesn't want to pump iron. Yeah. Um, and, and, And somebody who's stuck in a little apartment in New York City. And, and they tell the story about how COVID wiped them out and, and they thought of doing push-ups and TRX, a beach body or whatever. And yeah, it was stupid. And, and then, then they discovered d- dance and the discipline yeah. was nice, but it's the personal connection with you. That's really nice. Um, and they tell that in a video like this mm-hmm. and you mm-hmm. pop that up on the website, one, right. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. Yeah. Little kid, older lady, middle-aged guy, whatever parents mm-hmm. with two kids. And, and how this amazing safe space uh, with all the, the ups of dance and none of the downs of dance kind of evolved. Mm-hmm. Right. You know? Yeah. So now we've got a founder story, which is I was living in a shitty situation. Then there was a trigger that caused me to throw myself into the unknown. Mm-hmm. I bumbled along. I figured out videos didn't work live didn't work a combination kind of worked we're working on new stuff but amazingly i got this confidence and power because people were coming to me differently Mm -hmm. and if you're the sort of person who's looking for that thing that safe space no mean girls Mm -hmm. one-to-one connection fast forward rewind combined with a bit of live yeah the discipline of dance and none of the weirdness. Yeah. Uh, the beauty of exercise without any of the boredom. You might like this. That's one story. Second story. I'm an eight year old girl. I'm bored, stupid. I used to go to a studio. My mom said I can't go anymore. I like hanging out with Ursula because uh, it's just me and her. And, and she's so cool. Oh, and by the way, she actually even sent me a book, which is the coolest book. And my mom reads it to me. It's all about ballet. And I love Ursula forever. And I'm going to be a ballet, grow up to be a ballet dancer, just like her. And what I really like, at the end of each lesson, she gives us each some, uh, uh, something to do that's positive for our friends or something, you know, so right. she helps me be better. Yeah. Which is another feature you can build in, you know, the discipline dance brought into real life, life coaching lessons. Yeah. And then you've got a, you've got a 65 year old lady who said she's holed up in her apartment and she's going crazy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, those are two types of stories, founder story, customer story. There's a third story. Okay. It's the venture story and the market story. And that is, I don't know where you're going to put that, but I think it's a wonderful thing to have if I meet you at a barbecue Yeah. and you go, you know, this was the way the world was. The world of dancing is a shitty world. 
It's full of mean girls and arrogant people and attitude and people willing to dance for a nickel and a lot of people willing to exploit that. And it's horrible that such a natural, beautiful thing gets degraded into such a terrible thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, for outsiders, they don't even understand it. They, you know, that's why the joke is a man goes to the ballet, can't find a sleep like that at home, you know? You get the best sleep in the world at the ballet. Yeah. Uh, so people <laughs> don't get it. Yeah. And it's really fun. And that was the state of the world. Then my venture came in and it made it inclusive to 45, 50 year old men, eight year old girls, 65 year old ladies at home. It's a safe space minus the weirdness. Mm -hmm. And what happened was it disrupted the market because there was a huge vacuum. People couldn't go back to the status quo of dance. Mm -hmm. So it opened up this gap and that is where online ballet training thrived. And now we're growing leaps and bounds with all these new offerings. That is actually, well, did you hear about the husband ballet challenge that we did? You did, right? Yeah. Yeah. So actually that's really funny because it fully feeds into that. And, um, you know, it was for a good cause. And I feel like it was important that we, that with our, it was sort of our inaugural class and it was a challenge for the, for, for those of you that are watching this, they don't know what it was. It was a challenge for, for men to, um, do a half an hour of dancing and half of the proceeds went towards a charity of our choice, which happened to be the stigma free society, which, um, is, uh, which is a society, um, that, that is specifically, for trying to remove the barriers attached to certain stigmas, whether it's mental health or whether it's um, stigmas of any kind. And, you know, um, uh, so we it's been a charity that's been very close to my heart for lots of reasons, but one being the stigma of men dancing, like, you know, why is that a thing? So um, it was nice to see, we had like 15 guys come out um, and they all did ballet with me. They all did some grand plies and some grand jetés and they were really great sports about it. And they actually learned that dancing is pretty hard. <laughs> pretty quickly. So that was cool. So yeah, um, it, it, that ties in with that story too, which is cool. Now, cool. yeah, Bruce Lee, you know the story of Bruce Lee? Vaguely. Uh, Bruce I Lee mean, Kung Fu. Yeah. Uh, Kung Fu genius. First m- right. big, big, big Kung Fu star. Uh, also a competitive dancer. Was he? Nobody knows that. He actually won competitions uh, in Latin dancing. I did not and know that. And it fed, it totally fed into Kung Fu and martial arts. Yeah. And it gave him his, it gave him his style because he, yeah. he was all about style, right? Yeah. So there you go. Use that. Yeah. Now, that also, the, the point that you just mentioned where you did uh, uh, husband's dancing in service of a charity. Yeah. The beautiful thing of a story is it forces you to go, what's important to me? Now, you've mentioned a whole bunch of things. Mm-hmm. Uh, stigma. Mm -hmm. Mean girls, attitude, exploitation, exclusiveness, freakiness to outsiders. You've mentioned a whole bunch of things. Yeah. And your values are that you want to fight that kind of stuff. You want to make an inclusive place where everybody can just chill and do something that's actually pretty natural. Mm -hmm. It's a lot more fun than pumping iron. Mm -hmm. Makes you bendy, good for your life, puts your head in a great space. Now. Yeah. Those are your, those are your values. Yeah. The story pulled that out of you. Right. Cause you told me that I didn't know that about it before, yeah. but you pull that, you pull that out. And all I did was categorize right. what basically your values are now. Yeah. yeah. What's important about a story. Isn't that you tell a story because it's just bullshit then. Right. What's important is that you take that and say, huh, how is that going? How am I going to deliver that? Right, exactly. So part of your business, when you go to the website, it has to say that I promise that this is not mean girls, exploitative, weird, psycho crap, um, that it is inclusive, that it teaches the holistic beauty of, of, of movement and feeling good and getting your head in a good space and getting a better workout than the gym. And here are the things that I stand by. So yeah. the real power of storytelling is learning what you stand for yeah. and what you will deliver because that's what, that's what people like in a business. They go, oh, that's nice. It's all fuzzy mission, vision, values crap. Yeah. What 
do you promise to give me yeah. every time? And that leads into products. That leads into the husband dance right. challenge. Right. That leads into, you know, lessons for kids where you give them life lessons too. Yeah. You know, uh, so that, that creates, that turns your business into something that's more than Mm-hmm. what it was at a more dance studio. More than just dance lessons. There's Bingo. more there. Yeah. And that becomes that third thing. The third thing. The first thing is dance studio, status quo, shitty. Second thing is obvious solution, film dancing, lame. What's the third thing that arose that nobody expected? Well, it becomes like a place of life lessons and inclusivity mm-hmm. centered around one of the coolest things that anybody can do. Dance. Mm-hmm. Didn't see that one coming. And that's why my business is unique. Yeah. And there you go. Does that make sense? It does make sense. Yeah. That's, that's really great actually. Um, yeah. Now. Cause I said a lot, right? It's like, you yeah, you said to sift through it and that's kind of what I needed because it's like, where do I start with all this stuff? Yeah. That I think, you know, now the beauty is that we recorded this. Yeah. So you can go back to it like a dance lesson and check it out anytime. Hit fast yeah. forward, rewind. Now, you just got all this free coaching. There is an expectation. The expectation is that you are going to come back with a revamped landing page for your website. That one right up front talks about what you promise, where you came from, what you saw shitty in the world and what you promise to change. Yeah. And as time allows, I want to see testimonials on that website from the eight-year-old girl, from the 45-year-old guy saying that I hated dance because Ursula hated dance because I enrolled in her thing. All the promises, the story she told, they're all true. I love it. That that's the testimonial I want to see. Little kid, older lady, middle-aged guy, parents with kids, you name it. And then I want to see uh, a challenge or a thing that you do, an ongoing thing that you do where you say, uh, this is more than dance. So it's the challenge against stigma, you know? And I, so I want to be able to see on your site that I go, oh, she stands for more than just a lame replacement for a dance studio. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. So um, can you clarify a little bit your last point? Yep. So first, I'll go through all three again. One, I want to see at the top of the landing page, I want to see what you stand for. Right. And that means what you hate and what you're trying to create. Yeah. Okay. In the middle, I want to see stories from a whole bunch of people who go, yeah, she's not bullshitting you. It's the real deal. Yeah. Little kid, older lady, middle-aged guy, parents with kids. Videos, this rough, doesn't matter. Nobody cares as long as they hear the story. At the bottom, I wanna say, this is much more than learning how to dance. This is about making the world a better place. Yeah. I know, coming from a place that was full of stigma, that stigma is what I wanna fight. And so I'm having steady challenges. The next one is the men's dancing challenge. Gotcha. And when you dance and give 20 bucks, it goes to fight stigmas with this charity. Mm, that makes sense, okay, yeah, okay. So tell me that it's more than dance. Okay. Okay. And then I guess the final step, and this has nothing to do with story, is make it effortless for me to join. And I know you and Joe are good at that. Yeah. You know, you're like, here, sign up here. Boom, boom, boom. Credit card. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's great. Yeah. That's awesome. And there's your problem solved in <laughs> under 30 minutes. <laughs> I got and, you have, <laughs> and you have your job to do. Yeah. You have, you have yeah. to post that landing page so people can take a yeah. look at it. Yeah. And I'll hold you to it because I know you. <laughs> <laughs> so you can check up on me now. I oh, need I'll be checking up on you. you. Don't you worry. <laughs> okay. You're not getting away that easy. Uh-huh. All right, thank Ursula, you. thank you for thank being you the first person. Thank you for bearing with us with our technical difficulties for all the brand DIYers. Yes, we recorded this and then we posted it. But next Thursday, we are looking for somebody to do this again. So if you want to be in the hot seat, let me know and we'll put you in the hot seat and all of us will benefit from it. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. See ya. Okay, bye. Bye.